Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have got Brian's mm, JHS Encore Vintage uh, Advanced Series. This is an AV6, and this is a pretty good guitar. Um, I came across these early on when I started doing We Love Guitars, and I was mighty impressed by the quality of them. Um, so you, what you have is a kind of top of the line uh, vintage style, a vintage brand neck. You've got some Wilkinson HSS pickups in the um, familiar AV6 style uh, pick guard, which is a sort of court-like court configuration. You've got a Wilkinson bridge here, which at the moment is in all kinds of levels of wonky. Um, and it's a very chunky, heavy guitar on the back here. You see what also is distinctive about it and this neck fitting um, with the four bolts and the Bubinga extra heel or heel insert to kind of, I don't know, add some extra something or other. Trevor Wilkinson uh, insists that's the business. And we have the sort of Wilkinson, probably easy lock tuners um, but it's a chunk of a guitar. Is it easy lock? Yeah, double holes on the post. Ooh, what was that? Hmm, interesting. Um, so what we have is we have a plastic nut, unfortunately. Um, and I think the problem with this plastic nut, as with so many, um, actually, let's put the power in this, as with so many, oh, not so many, some of the vintage and encore style guitars, is that I have a horrible feeling that this nut is oversized um, so you won't get a straight replacement in there yeah 3.43 3.45 so really 3.5 nut width um, now I'm not sure we're going to find anything off the shelf off the peg or whatever you might like to call it that's going to replace that but we're going to have to because that's not good enough um so this guitar is in for a setup this guitar is i think i might have to bring down the camera again there's something odd about this guitar in that it's got a really weird finish um it has evidently there's something creaking in here at my my something there's something happening when i move it around that feels odd yeah, <laughs> there you go, my God. Never seen that much movement in anything. Blimey. Shish kebab. That's what's been moving. See, I can, huh, I can pick that up. Look at that, ready? That is terrible. <whistles> okay, well, let's, let's do this in chunks. <laughs> uh, there's quite a bit to do here. So let's first of all take off the neck and see why this is wobbling the way it is because that's the first thing we've got to be clear about um, I have no idea it could be these are just loose they're not particularly tightly done up so anyway this guitar is down for a good setup and the, the weird thing I noticed from the outset about it is that you may be able to see here and how the lights reflecting but this this body has been built with a huge let's see if we can find it oh there you go a huge uh, not in the wood and actually you can if you're looking from maybe the other side you can see the, the grain going all around this knot and it comes all the way through to the other side you can see it there and you can see the lines of the grain following it around so it's an absolute huge knot and it's completely sort of messed up the paintwork so the paintwork is kind of sunken in to the into this knot area not area um so it's and as a result it's like it's never been finished in the polish it, it feels to me like in the factory they spotted this and they just said leave it don't bother polishing it don't bother buffing it this is going out we'll sell it to an employee as a second or something like that so uh it's been i, I think it would have been written off as a as a factory second um well that's interesting and um, Brian has ended up with it. 
Um, you know, one of the questions he asked me was, is there anything we can do about it? And realistically, no, that would have to be, if there was any chance at all, that would have to be stripped back. Okay, that's why. <laughs> Sheared off. Okay, this is, this is the, right, this is, this is the thing I get. Oh my God, I get the fun and, and joy of doing this. Customers go, what's wrong with my guitar? Well, the neck's wobbling. Why is the neck wobbling? because the bolt has sheared off inside. That's why it's not holding it. Why is the bolt sheared off? God knows, but it's why it's wobbling. And now we're gonna have a challenge to get the remains out. So, oh God, I think this is gone as well. Oh yeah, that's exactly what's happened. So the question is, Brian, is who did you buy this off? And uh, why didn't they tell you? what was broken about it, because broken it certainly is, and it's not actually gonna to wanna to come out of its own free will. So we've got two sheared off bolts, which is uh, made this, come on, I need the magnet to come out. If it doesn't come out, I'm gonna to have to use something else, another magnet, if I can get this one off the wall. <coughs> come on, how'd you come? Yep, sheared off as well, bloody hell. Look at that. Actually, they, they look like they've been cut. <laughs> I mean, my name isn't Columbo, but. That's been weakened and cut. I'm not, not quite sure why. We'll find out any minute now. So out comes the fabulous, uh, I think out comes the fabulous Bubinga neck. Doesn't it? Please. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Okay. It comes out under, under like that. Right. That's right. It's an extension. So you have to take this off as well. Right. Let's take it all off. So there's a bit of work to be done here. So let's get the, let's get the back plate off as well. <sighs> so there uh, could be a number of reasons now why this is a second. It's uh, the paint job is terrible. The bolts have sheared off two of them whether or not we're going to be able to dig out two sheared off bolts in the body of this. And I'm just looking, these screws are coming out looking a little bit rusty as well. Not too bad, but a bit rusty. So it uh, wouldn't surprise me that this body was too wet when it was made. Um, and it probably shrunk, shrank, shrunk. Yeah, yeah, that's right, we've got, oh yeah, of course we know, we know it was wet because it's got rust on it. We talked about the rust. So, there's more problems on this, Brian, than you would uh, care to mention. Oh Christ, all right, that's a problem. Okay, I didn't know they were actually, bloody hell, soldered, soldered, welded in place. Let's uh, take them off this way. Okay. So we've got a bit of a struggle on our hands. Oh, Jesus. Uh, let's get, oh, this is a total strip down now. So what's gone from being a setup to a complete strip down because it's got major problems. I think, I've forgotten, I didn't look at the notes, but I think this lived in an attic and was got down. And I think what we'll probably find is that these have either rusted or may well have sheared off as well. Horrible spinning feeling about this. Doesn't want to come out. Oh, it's not sheared anyway. I think we've probably got stripped out holes. If that wasn't coming out, that one was probably a bit stripped. We've got strings rusted into place in the block. So we're gonna to have to do some work on that as well. But these are, yeah, there's, there's damp, damage, rusty. <coughs> Tremolo screws. <laughs> oh, there's me thinking it would just be a straightforward setup. Of course it's not. I remember Brian mentioning that it had been sat around in the, in the rust, or sat around rusting. So anyway, we'll get it all off and we'll take the whole damn thing apart because that's the only way we're really gonna make sense of what's going on and what's rescuable or not. These bloody cut off springs are getting in the way because they're rusted into place. What is stopping this coming out now? Oh, of course, it's got the best, got, got, gosh darned 
springs attached to it, hasn't it? So it won't pull out very well. Will it pull out? Can I make it pull out? Holy cow. Bear with me. Ugh. Right, next. Off with the things. God, yeah, this is a this is a funny old state of affairs, this thing. Okay, uh, we've got rust on the scratch plate screws, I think, as well. Yep. So the danger of that is that they, when they're really rusty like they are, um, they shear off and you end up having to dig them out sometimes, which is absolutely not what you want. So thankfully, at this point in time, they're all coming out. This is an interesting little uh, diagnostic thing going on, I'm finding the things that are wrong with it. Those are loose, that's okay on that end. So, I'm kind of half expecting these screws to snap. Very kindly, it ain't yet. But we do have a problem with that neck heel, a major problem. Uh, not unrescuable. I don't really care much about that screw since it's Actually, that's about the best condition one of them on. That one. <sighs> okay. Allow me. Gordon Bennett. Okay, what was that from? <laughs> oh dear. What was that? So, anybody? And we've got a, an idea, it looks like the end of a, a different, an old kind of truss rod. Mm. Right, let us, let us, let us do something. Excuse me, get my face in the way. I think we just need to hoik this out right now. And we'll get a close look, let's take, sorry about the view, not very good angle get these out it's rusty of course oh brian oh brian oh brian what a mess okay we'll have a close look at that looks all right nothing toward there uh, ha ha right ha. okay somebody's clever solution ah okay of course I'm looking at this they are hand cut because somebody's wow this isn't how it works surely that looks did it really work like that maybe I'm maybe I'm am I Maybe I'm, am I, um, um, is there something I don't already don't know about this? Was this always like, no, this can't be. This has to be a, somebody's made a, a solution to a problem here. Could that always, was that always a bolt? Do you know what? I had one of these and it didn't have that. Okay. <laughs> this was not how it worked. How did it work? How did it work? How did it work? How did mine work? That is weird. Maybe this is how it was meant to be. It looks so crudely put together. I wonder if this is some sort of some sort of temp, um, prototype that didn't quite work out or something. So these are sheared off, cut off bolts. They go through there. The idea is that they stick on here and these oh, blimey these little bits of metal as if they were from a from a um an old truss rod go in there and this comes up through there and fixes into each one of those I i've not seen this before how weird 
So there we've got, we've got this bit sticks on there like this, theoretically. <laughs> or I throw it away down there, theoretically. This bit goes on here. That's been hand cut, so, or, you know, chopped off. So how, how is that meant to work if that's been chopped? Can I get this to bite on here or is there not enough? You know what, there is enough, let's go on. Okay, well, do you know what? I can't, I can't really fault this if that's what it's meant to do, but I've never seen this. Well, there's a first for me anyway. Maybe that's how it went. The, I'm trying to think how mine fitted on, because I had the blue, the Guna blue one. This has clearly come undone. That's one of the reasons why it's loose, but that doesn't mean that it can't be tightened up, which is what I'm doing here. So maybe it is, oh, maybe we're on to a slightly easier job than I anticipated, except this now doesn't feel like it really wants to go in. And it will. I'm charging my battery driver at the moment, so hence I'm doing this by hand. Well, I have to say, I think I think what's happened, if anything, I don't know how I've never seen that done before. And maybe I just haven't seen this model. I mean I haven't probably haven't taken this model apart like this, but my Laguna Blue AV6 with the three P90s did not have little inserts like that. This clearly does. And I think what the part of the problem we've got here is that if it was meant to be like this, then these have clearly come undone over the years and hence the neck is wobbling all over the place. Now, that actually isn't the end of the world because he said listening to the cracking sounds. Um, because I think what we'll be able to do is just put some thread lock on there and keep them from going anywhere. It doesn't have to be very strong stuff. Now I'm just putting these little darlings back in here. So that's that's a pretty fit fixed neck arrangement. That's just, I've never seen that before in my life. Right, let's do it now while we're at it. Let's get it thread lock in. Up, then. So we'll just undo these, that one at a time first. Well, I'm astonished. We've still got plenty of work to do in terms of sorting out the um, sorting out the bridge, which is definitely rusted to hell. But let's take this off. This is just long enough, but it has a. It's definitely a hand cut, um, a hand cut bolt. You know, it's amazing. Let's just wrench this around here a bit. Make sure we get it. Well and truly caveat, and then we get it to bite. There we are. How strange! <laughs> Never seen it before. That's a, that's a first. Anyway, it's a good outcome. That's sorted that bit for now. We'll um, take care of this. Oh, don't want that to happen, that doesn't matter too much. Um, yeah, how weird. I suppose it's a good enough design. It works. Let's get it gummed up. Right, well, weird things. So we've solved the neck problem, which is great. All right, let's just leave that setting or whatever the word would be. Right, good, good, that sorted. Um, let's just, before we do any go any further, let's just make sure this thing works, because if it doesn't, what I don't want to be doing is investing time and um, Brian's money in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it some crankings with a truss rod key. A uh, truss rod key? Yes, an uh, Allen key. I really, what I'm trying to get this to do is bend in a bit of a back bow 
Um, now, that those of you who are, oh, who are nervous about the uh, truss rod adjustment, you can see I'm cranking that pretty hard and I'm getting some back bow. Okay, that's fine. So it does, it does adjust in that direction. So now I'm going to slack it off. I want to see a corresponding uh, curve in the other direction. That's now slack and that's curved in the other direction. Good. Okay, so that's positive. Um, apart from anything else, that's not in bad shape. Now, I've got the buffer out here. I could actually shine this up a bit except I've thread locked this on and actually it's never going to look much better than this. <laughs> uh, shall I shall I give it a little bit of a buff what do you say? If I do um, it's just it'll, it'll make it a little bit shinier but I don't think we're really gonna get very far. Let's have a let's have a quick look. I, I'll do this I'll leave the cameras running because this is real life but since the since the buffer is already set up in the other room or you might as well go and do it and for that i then might as well take this chap with me come along see you in a minute uh,
Glasses, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't even notice. I didn't believe it. Oh. Well, that's actually, oh god, a vast improvement. Look at that. That's the joy of having a buffer handy, Andy. You can really give something a new lease of life. That's a, that's a, much a great improvement wow i mean it's got the problem with the heel uh, the heel the knot obviously but you know something that's a, a shine and a half can you see can you see it can you see it can you see it that's a, that's a ton better right good okay so we have our neck done up let's double check that neck Done up, neck, done up, neck, done up, neck, fixed and done up. Okay, groovy. We'll hang that from here for a minute. There's, there's some issues with the edge of this neck, the fingerboard, but I'll come to those if I may. Okay. The reason I had the buffer out is because I was, this is my test piece where I did some, uh, did some what do you call it? Uh, waterborne poly on here. So can you see yourself in the mirror? Somewhere, sort of. Yeah, waterborne poly. Um, and I got to buff it out today. Pretty impressive. That's uh, I don't know how many coats, maybe six coats or something, or very light coats. But that's really excellent. Done in these conditions, not flatted back properly either, so I wasn't really worried about that. I've just conscious of holy cow <laughs> this has more problems than uh, Brian I think realized so 
So we've got a severely rusted um, component here. And I think we'll probably find that the uh, springs and their little attachments may well be uh, irreparably clogged up in here. And also we may have no way of getting the getting the um, strings out of here that could be the end of these. Now the thing is, these are not that expensive to replace, but you know, it's gonna be a cost. Uh, I have to say that apart from that, that cost, uh, I think it's not the end of the world. Um, a new bridge on this, bit of buffing, which has brought it up beautifully. Um, a new bridge would be worth it on that guitar as a, as a neck. Uh, the tuners actually are in good neck. They haven't rotted amazingly. So I think it's a, it's a worthwhile chassis to do something with. But I I think if we, if we simply cannot get through this wall of uh, rust inside these holes to get the strings out, then we, we don't really have a lot of options, I'm afraid. Um, but I'll, I'll sort of have a good idea about that in a minute. So I'm just taking the saddles off and out of the way. I could send some, fire some uh, degreaser, not degreaser, um, kind of loosener stuff in there, but uh, whether or not it's gonna free up stuff that's corroded in place is anybody's guess. Um, like I say, they're not too expensive to replace these and they're fairly common place uh, bridges. I'll double check the spacing, but I'm pretty sure it's a 54 mil spacing. Well, that's a set of interesting things shown up already. Uh, looking at the neck, on plus side, it adjusts. Um, the fingerboard looks good to me. No twists. Uh, the frets seem in fairly good neck, so they'll, they'll level up nicely. So at the moment, everything in its favor. Uh, the Wilkinson pickups are good quality. Um, there's no reason at all why these shouldn't uh, perform well. It's this, this is the, this is the problem we've got. So those are so those have corroded and rusted into place. Um, these are rusted into place. I've never really seen anything like this before. Uh, we may, we may get a bit of movement going, but it's no. That's what's going to happen. It's going to break off more than anything else. So. Possibly we could maybe drill out a little bit, but that's, that's where we're starting from. Absolute screw. I'm not even gonna bother trying to drill those out if we can't get, uh, can't get out at the bottom of these. So I'm just gonna spray some dirty, greasery stuff. Uh, mask release glue into here. I have to say, I'm, I'm not hugely optimistic. And now I'm dripping it all over the place. That's clever. So maybe it's going through. I kind of expect that. So that might be a, might be a good sign, you might say. Uh, we're going to sort of hope and see if we can encourage some things to go all the way through. So, yeah. Hmm. Okay, let's do something else. Oh, no, I'm afraid, I'm afraid this is... No, this is sheared. That's rusted in place. No, it's not gonna it's not gonna do it. I think we're looking at a new bridge. New bridge. I'll just clamp it in here. Uh I see if I can persuade it to move at all. I don't think we're gonna get anywhere. The trouble with a, a thread if it's if it's rusted in place, a thread will not. Uh, behave. Well, one of them's come undone, that's pretty good. It's no good if three don't. I'm afraid. 
so is this one. Uh, no. We're gonna, not gonna get there, anyway. Too rusty. It, it, the, the picture that um, Brian kind of gave me in the first instance was uh, of something with a bit of rust here, but what we didn't know was that these are soldered, welded into place. Uh, this one, I shan't stand a chance of getting this one out. I, I wonder, let's see if I've got a one of these reverse chopper things. bothering for 20 quid it's cost it's going to cost more to try but um Well, let's try it. Let's clamp it in here. It'd be kind of amusing to see if it, if I can even move it. If I can move it, move it. But hey, at least we know what we're up against. That's about right. Is that the right size? No, it better be this one. darn things out. So the idea is you shoot this one into there first, you drill it out and then you stick the other one in and you drill it and out it comes. That's what they say. Try it. Well, that's cheap Chinese crap for you. Just uh, gets very hot and makes some smoke. You never know, it might work. Let's see if it has, stands the slightest chance of doing it. Damage screw extractor. Yeah, right. Hit, hit, extract. Well, that ain't happening. I kind of think it. It's as if it needs something more to grab hold of, um, but it's not getting it in respect of this. Hmm. No. It's going absolutely nowhere. Drill out, drill out, drill out. Nope. It's 
not doing it. See, that wants to cut that way. Bizarre. The picture that comes with this is so poor that you wouldn't make out what the hell it was trying to show you anyway. No, it's, it's putting up too much of a fight. Um, Um, the only other option I've got is to get make a cut in there, but it's going to cut across the. Even if I get a, a slot, it's going to cut across there. So I think I think we just write this off as a, they're dud. They're dud. So let's uh, let's not waste any more time on this. I'll, I'll keep them in the pile of stuff. We will have to do something with. But I think we need to get an order in. Um, so I'll put all of this what we also want we'll get if we order another one we'll get proper screws um because these are rusty so we don't really want to use those in fact we don't want to use any of this component these components again so they can all go in the i don't like you box um that's good that's good and just take a quick look at this in a minute uh There's a little bit of cracking there, but it's not the end of it. nothing serious. So everything here <clears throat> is okay. Uh, I suppose the other bit we have to just take on board right now is what we've got in the way of nuts for this. Because if we if we have to make a custom one, that's an absolute royal pain. Sorry. I have a feeling that these will be too narrow. These uh, tusk replacements always almost always start off just a fraction narrower, not than regular ones, but these are uniquely wide in my experience. So we said what 3.5, 3.2, you see. The only way this is going to work is if we find a way of um, buttressing it. Um, now sometimes I have a fair bit of leftover material, and I can. Ah, I've got some spare tusk. Okay, so I can make one up and I can... There's a bit of tusk material there. It doesn't even have to be tusk, but I've got the tusk material. So with this, I could thicken this out and then we take it back down. We do it on the back end, actually. That's the way to do it. So that's one possibility. I think it's the best option, to be honest, because carving one out of a block uh, means we're kind of back to square one of having to use files on the slots and the whole point of one of the major points of fitting a tusk nut is precisely so that we don't have to um, stick a cut of slots with with kind of rather crude raggedy files so what i'm going to do with this one is i'm going to stick this this block of tusk to the back this is left over from i'm actually not what sure what that was it was a tusk nut that I cut down to size prior. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flat side and I'm going to glue it and clamp it to this edge of this nut and we'll shape it down so that we end up with this, they're basically the same nut with a little bit of tusk boot on the back. And it's, it seems like a lot to add on to it. Um, I've got a couple of different pieces here that I could use. I'm just going to try and find the most appropriate one. Uh, that's the exact, actually it might be this one because that's the exact right width as well. Yeah, by about a millimeter, is this the right width? Yeah, it's a little shorter. What about this one? That's a tiny bit, why is it a tiny bit shorter? Okay, that's the match of size wise. Okay, spares, I can put them over here for later. 
So the first thing will be to get this glued to here and then put in the clamp, put clamped in the vise more like. So what we're going to have is we're going to put it on the, the back end edge. Um, so we're going to go flat edge, which is the best way. Is that going to be the best way or that way? It's going to have three holes in it. That's going to not. We'll go this edge to this edge. And we're going to end up sanding back quite a lot of this. So that's how it's going to go. better off overhanging everywhere slightly before it sets that's what I want a bit of a bit of overhang because I can afford a bit of overhang and I'll sand it back when the time is right so there's my bit of overhang built in now what I want to do is get it in the vise with a bit of a helping squeeze and uh, I could have some Blue Boost accelerator, which don't harm me to throw on there while we're at it. This stuff is ridiculously expensive um, and tends to be, it's, it's, it's kind of meant for repairs using the Blue Boost system, but that's uh, I think is glued. Okay, I'll just leave that in there for a couple of minutes. So that will just be a case of um, bringing that piece down to size. And the funny part is, uh, it'll be 0.2 of a millimetre difference, um, but it will allow me to get that in there uh, nice and firm. Uh, whereas I, I wouldn't be able to do that right now because it's, um, it's going to be too loose as it stands. Too loose, which is terrible because you can't get, you can't do with a too loose nut loose little trick so I'm just gonna get me a small hammer so knock these over Give me hammer. and here I was going to just knock off me nut so I'm gonna get a bit of support under there now strats have a habit of breaking off the metal the metal the wood that's just the other side of the nut so it's kind of hard to Avoid that. If it's going to do it, it's going to do it. But I'm trying to do it as gently, as persuasively as I can. Okay, that's not bad. As it comes without any major damage. Now, what I've got is this plastic nut for reference. Um, horrible plastic nut, I should say. Let's have a quick look again. So 3.4. Um, but as I say, the, the tusk is about 3.25. So we're about 15 or 20, 0.15 or 0.2 a millimeter short um, or too little. And that would cause a horrible amount of lean and it's just diabolical. Now it's interesting, what I'm seeing here is that it appears that someone's already cut the nut off this or there's a, there's a score, a score line, score line, score line. I'll show you a close-up. Is that trademarked? Probably is. Close-up. Oh, let's use the zooming thing. See that? Look, a telltale saw mark. All the way through that slot. Mostly clean, but that's not right. Somebody's cut too far on something. Uh, would that be in the factory? Maybe, but... Who knows? Oh, anyway, I'll keep on, keep on recording. So I don't think we'll get too far tonight because I think what we're going to have to do. Where's my zoom? Zoom back out. Thank you. I think what we're going to have to do is order a bridge, or to, certainly talk to Brian and be, get ready to order a bridge. But on the plus side, as I said, this is in all senses. Yikes! Oh dear, that's not good. That's that's messed up. Man, that's messed up. Well, the good thing is, is because it's a wide, extra wide slot, we do have 
a lot of room to move this little file in here so we can get a sort of leveling going without too much trouble. Um, question about this is would we want an adjustable nut or would we want one to fit in? I have, I don't know. I can see that this is raised at the edges and bowed in the middle. So something wasn't right with this slot either, which isn't, but I can't imagine that an owner has taken, has sawn off an original nut. They often, I, these were often bl uh, black on the, certainly on the, the Indian encores and some of the earlier vintages, they were black nut. I can't imagine somebody will have sawn that off, which is sometimes why you might find the, the score mark um, and then put on a plastic nut. There's no improvement at all. So, uh, but it's definitely not completely flat because this file is telling me there's a gap in the middle there. Now it's probably not that much, um, but it's definitely there. And you can see it's not cutting the middle at all. So anyway, that's not such a big deal. Um, we can we can sort of just slowly wear that down and kind of use the chisel to make sure we've got a dead straight slot. I actually don't I don't feel that is too bad of a slot. Uh, let's just drop a, a, another it's like a customized tusk nut in there from another area. See that would be its normal width, which would be rattly as hell. Um, now just putting in that in there. Because it's dipped in the middle, if anything, it makes it sit fairly well. So it's a problem when it's humped in the middle, and that's when you get the, the nut rocking from side to side, which isn't what we want. But as it stands, that's not too bad. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I think this might as well kind of draw this to a close. Um, I suppose the thing I haven't checked, and again, it's one of these, um, game changer things these are all these are all in good condition that's quite surprising they're in good shape um i don't even think there's much in the way of rust up here so something kept that safe um the neck is nicely fitted now which it wasn't and we've got quite a bit of pizzazz and shine oh what i was going to say i'll do the check and the pickups in a second what we've got on here is we've got a strange overhang could even be a separation now i i once dropped my av6 on its face um, and when i did that what happened is the fingerboard sprang off um, and it, it resulted in a um well i had to glue it back on first of all it wasn't a major deal i glued it and clamped it back on but when it went back on it had this which is a a, a little lip and this has got it in both sides here. And I think this fingerboard has been off before. Now, the only way to overcome that is to um, sand it down. And if we sand it down, then the only other thing we have to do is to go back and slightly refinish, uh, put some fresh um, poly onto the edge. Now this is slightly stained, so it's difficult to get rid of that lip without taking the color away um in that case you then you have to put on some some tinted and i can see it there but it's a it's an unpleasant little step and i can see the i can see the glue that's under there so it has definitely been off in the past i don't think it's i don't think it's still loose or anything but i think we'll if we if we take this back i mean it's a horrible feel so if we take it back we're going to have to build build this up again I don't mind doing that, but we'll do it with some some tinted poly. Um, but it, it'll, it'll make this thing feel much better than it was because now I'm kind of, this is now personal with this guitar. I want this to play and feel great. I don't want it to have this badly stuck on fingerboard. Um, so we can just, even that is nearly, nearly back to where it should be. But it was the thing I noticed straight away is that I, that's what the result of dropping mine on its face was. Um, and it could be that something similar has happened to this fella on the, in its lifetime. Um, the, the poly finishing 
to tint this and, and just build it back up is, is not a problem. But I'm, I'm kind of determined to do it with it flush so that it feels, you know, really good. And I found that out at that time that it's nigh on impossible to reattach the uh, fingerboard without getting a lip in the process. Okay, that's nearly right. Mm, nice. We'll do the same on this side. Um, telltale signs, there's a dent there. Um, yeah. No, that's, a, that's quite an overlap there. That's almost almost into scraping with the knife territory there. Um, but yeah, it was a it was the first thing I it taught me that if the fingerboard comes off in the in such an accident. Well, it, what it told me was that the when you have the fingerboard glued to the underlying wood, if you stress it like that, that what happens is that the forces uh, ex kind of express themselves by breaking the seal or breaking the joint um, between the fingerboard and the, and the uh, God, is, can you hear it? That's quite extreme. So yeah, the, the forces or the stresses are shed by the fingerboard breaking free. Um, so that was kind of not surprising because, you know, I'd let it fall and I let it fall on its face in the garden. I stupidly leaned it against a hammock, which was blowing freely in the wind and the hammock swung around and the, and the guitar fell off forward onto the grass. And, you know, there was a sort of and I looked and the whole fingerboard was disconnected. So, um, I immediately sort of in horror, I got my clamps out and I thought, well, oh, I'm in the business now of fixing things like this. So isn't that convenient? And I got my tight bond glue and uh, got it all lined up and so on and uh, clamped it and glued it and clamped it. And But there was no a chance that I could get it flush like this. And there, there is no chance that you can do it. Now this is, this is now beautifully smooth. And, and now that horrible little edge is gone, but it's uh, you know it's taken a bit of uh, the colour with because they they make these look vintage by guess what painting them with amber finish, so that's how they make them look aged. And um, so as soon as you have a repair like this to do, you will lose the uh, the colour because it's very thin. But as I say, we've we've got some amber stain at home which we can add back onto this. So I think I would probably take this home tonight just to do that part of the, re the repairing over the next day or so because I think what we'll need to do is we'll need to obviously check in with Brian about the uh, tremolo and go from there get his say so on it. So while it's while it's at home and presuming assuming he wants to go ahead there you go that's nice that's fixed that that's really it's really got that back to where it should be. Good. Okay. Um, it's, you know, for me, things like that are much more important than, you know, even if we couldn't match it up colour-wise, which I think we'll get some way towards it. Um, but even if we couldn't, I would say that a smooth finish like this is infinitely better than um, that horrible step that you can feel every time you handle this guitar. Um, anyway, so that's good. All right. That's that done. I'll put this in the case for now because we'll take this home and do the, the, the poly refinish on the edge. I've got poly at home. I've got some amber finish at home as well. Um, and what I'll just want to do now is check the pickup outputs to make sure that we're carrying on to invest time and energy in this guitar. That it's uh, that the pickups are actually producing some output. And our way of Knowing that is to let's get hold of the signal, the wire to the jack plug. Bing! Vacuum later. Okay, so this is our. That's um. There's a blend pot there, uh, which is the. Which is I'm not quite sure what does that actually do on this. This takes the. Okay. Uh, so it's a blend pot. Well, wait a minute. Is 
this actually joined to that? Yes, it is. Okay, so that's grounded to there. The top bit, it's grounding. All it's doing is sending this, the coil split signal to ground. That's interesting, isn't it? So that third button splits the coil progressively rather than a single, you know, on off. You just roll it and you go more or less humbucker from single coil to humbucker, but progressively. That's what that little pot does. The, uh, these these AV6s had quite cute little wiring systems. The, um, the 3P91 had a kind of rolled, that had a similar thing that rolled them off from uh, stacked to single coil. Okay, well, I'm getting, at this point in time, output from the, output from here, I'm getting nothing, which is not a very positive sign. Oh dear. Oh no, thank goodness. That was must have been turned off then. Okay, 13. 13, that's in bridge position. Uh, bridge and try it wrong side. Bridge position was 13. Uh, middle 6.7. Neck. What did you say? 13 on the bridge. Well, watch what we'll do. It would be easier if I could connect this. Oh. Hmm. Something is 7, but okay. That feels a bit iffy. I don't know whether there's something Something is touching something. I'll have to double check for that. So interestingly, if we go to the um, if we go to the bridge position and we turn this the other way, that bridge position will should go from thirteen to about seven. There you go, seven. Turn it a little bit. Go to about what ten? Oh, straight to thirteen. That's interesting. It's not not much. Um, seven to eleven. To 12 wow that is wide open sorry 14 is its full kick but that's that is wide open from barely past the uh, shut off position it starts at it starts at, at 7 right there on the wide open 7.2 and you only have to do the tiniest thing and it's on it's on 11, 10, so it just, it's, it's, it's all or nothing-ish, but that's good, they're working. So I'm happy with that. And the blend pot, but they call it a blend pot, but it's a progressive coil split, that's what it'd be. So that's working. Okay, I'm happy with that. I've got a couple of other little things I wanna do, which I might just carry on filming since, since it doesn't really matter where it goes, but what I want to be able to do, I have got a task to do and I have to drill, I have to route a shape on the top of, uh, I have to route, right, what I've got to do is I've got to take a, a right left-handed acoustic guitar and I've got to fill in the, uh, I've got to cut a piece of rosewood and fill in the uh, the thing, <laughs> the slot that the uh, saddle sits in, I've got to fill it in, I'm going on one side to, uh, and then cut a new one crossing it going the opposite way. So what I have to be able to do to make that work is I have to be able to use the Dremel to take a, a short, a straight line, make a straight line trench in a small object which actually isn't even as wide as this. So what we don't have is a great deal of flat material. So if we, let's say we, let's say what we're gonna, oh Christ. Um, what width is your typical saddle? That's the, that's the first question. Anyone know the answer to that? Anyone know how to get any of these things out of here without cutting your fingers? 
Doy. That's not very good, is it? Right, so the first question is the width. Name me the width of... <coughs> okay. Typical width of a saddle. And that is going to be... What would we reckon a tusk saddle width? I've probably got one somewhere in my leftovers. That's that's running at three. That's probably it, you know, three millimeters. Let's presume that it is, and let's load this up quite low. So the idea will be to fix this thingy into here, which looks like that. And then ultimately, we get this down to here, sort of like that. In fact, a little bit lower. In fact, I think what we need to do is tie this out of the way. So the idea is we're going to we need we're going to need a bit of plunge range to get this, but we're going to want to set it down a bit, lower it, and drag drag it. But we're going to need to follow an edge. And we the problem with this is we're going to have to fake an edge going a line to follow like this. So you have to have some sort of guide that's going to have to attach to the bridge, which isn't going to be. So the problem we've got is we've got a curved bridge, a narrow curved bridge, and we're going to have to run along the top of that guided by something. Now, I guess we could stick something to the roof of the Thing, as long as it sticks higher than the bridge and provides us a guideline that's true we could put a diagonal guide on there um, and what could we pretend that diagonal guide is well we could we could fake one up on here couldn't we for good measure and if we were going to do that we could fake up why why we could use a, a piece of wood that i messed up earlier um so let's just say imagine we did something like that let's should we just we can we can either, we can either, 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 we can either stick this on like this. Oh, why don't we stick this on instead of drilling holes and things? Let's try and use a bit of template skills. Uh, I've just bought some new, some of this new, so I can afford to waste this. So I'm going to stick this down as my, my guide and my staff. So what I'm going to do is stick that there. I'm going to kind of put it on there like that, get as much of a grip, grip as I can. That's a nice thin little slice. Or should I do it there? Does it really matter? Except that's already been done. That way is kind of good, but what am I trying to do? Let's just, let me just, just, just get, get a reality check here. Okay, let's do it something like that. I'll get a fairly good grip. And this, of course, won't be the right angle or anything, but all I'm going to start off by doing is seeing if I can use something like this to follow, to make this router follow a line. Now, do we have contact? No, we don't. Now, do we have contact? Yes. So we have an edge, right? That could be my edge. Aha. Okay. So let us imagine we draw ourselves... We have to fix that edge where um, exactly where we know that the line will go. So I don't really have anything I can do other than score it with the edge of this, which fair enough gives me a, a line I can follow. So then it goes to there, and then it goes to there. Follow the line, follow the line, something like that, and we go. Look, there's our our tracking line that we're going to duplicate, and let's say our thingy is from there to there just just for our practicing sake does that make sense to you yes it does oh it's well to go this way and it's a fraction but we don't care yeah yeah so what we're going to do is we are going to um we're going to sink this a tiny bit more whoops so that's no good <laughs> so let's start by dropping that to there this is mark's my friend mark's little tool and amazingly um, he's coming up on Thursday to drop something off. Socially distanced dropping offs. Okay, so if we now fire this up and we drop this in, leaning up against a 
Okay, leaning up against the edge. Oops, not going to that to happen, but... So in principle, that's not so bad, is it? A little starter for 10. Um, maybe the secret will be that we ought to sink the blade a little further into the blade. Yeah, that thing. Oh no, the question is which way around do we do? Because it's that's the way around. Um, yeah, we, we could we could so we slacken that off, twist it down a bit, that's what happens, tighten this up. That's what we do, silly boy. Get it going. Bit more speed. Where's the mark? We drop down a bit like this. Can we do it? No, we just have to stop and remove things. But actually, that's going to be fine as a little print, a little process. Um, and that, you know, we can, we've, we know that we can use uh, sticky tape as the thing to hold it down. Now, what I might do is I might go over the top of the guitar with green tape first and then use the sticky tape. Uh, somewhere over the rainbow, I've got a bit of saddle material which I could, should, would, oh, blimey, that's helpful. Somewhere in here, and all these spare bits of bone, which I'm never gonna get to use, because I don't do bone anymore, baby. In fact, oh yeah, look, the only piece of saddle I've got, a leftover bit of tusk, would you believe? And that is, I would say, is exactly the right size. Well, we'll find out when I deepen it a bit more. And that's a bit of one as well, so we can try that, and that's, kind of barely we we that's just about on the mark that one so we would in this case we would slacken those off slacken those off twist that down a little bit tighten those back up and then we drop it back down now this time I've turned it round so that's technically in the right way get down onto here get down on it so lean it press it against the wall drop it in Let's get in there. I mean, it's just a little bit at a time. That's actually could be argued to be a fraction too wide. So I guess the more you do it, the wider it gets. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't really get thinner. That's three mils, and this will. If this is dead on three mils, we'll be in this. We'll be in this sort of ballpark where that's always going to be a bit loose because it's kind of difficult. 303 um, and I bet you this is 339 so just just the, the wondering the movements of this are such that it's gonna always be a bit wider so we have that challenge to get the cut the thing we don't have a, a narrow one anywhere I'll have a look around but I think that's our thinnest thing now the only alternative is that we basically do a little bit of a width shim on the uh, saddle. Again, if it sits fairly deep into the thing, then it's not a problem as well because it's, um, you know, it, it'll it'll lose that extra bit of looseness by going further down. I can hear people. That's not right. So here I'm going down to the line again. Um, kind of follow up by setting, whoops, setting the height to there. A bit of wriggle there. So. Take it down. 
down a bit further this time and lock it off. Now this is quite a depth, a, a big, a uh, big jump. So we should be able to just drop it down. Oh. 